And so here's where Cormani is. He says his grades are fine, but he posted a video on his YouTube page about what, what happens next. What is your message to your next school? Um, just know whoever you are, you're, you're getting a dog that's ready to work. And yeah, that's simple, that's simple fact. Yeah, you already know, no hard feelings. Some people just gotta take a step, step back from things sometimes. Certain people, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I feel like I just don't wanna play for clicks. I actually wanna be involved with a great leading program. That's going to develop players. I don't want to play for clicks. Well, we play for clicks here. The thing is, all the clicks go to Pete Nakos because he's the one with all the news on the transfer portal. He's breaking it left and right. Let us talk to Pete about this Cormani McLean situation. Pete, that was a you, you. It's sort of a Rorschach test. What he said. I, I don't want to play for clicks. Like. However you want to feel about Deion Sanders, or if you're a Colorado fan, however you want to feel about Cormani McLean, I feel like you could kind of extrapolate whatever meaning you want from that. Yeah, and and you and I know, right? Like Deion Sanders has always been about Deion Sanders since he got that Colorado job from day one when he said he was bringing his Louis uh, luggage to he's releasing daily vlogs uh, through his son, like almost daily now. Um so I'm really interested to see where Cormani McLean lands. I think that just from talking to sources the last few days, like he hasn't been on a visit yet. I was told that he hasn't planned any visits yet this week. Like I think some some programs are definitely skeptical if they want to bring in Cormani McLean at the moment. Well, and there was a lot of drama surrounding his recruitment. You know, he, he was committed to Miami. Florida was heavily involved. And it's interesting because the, the teams that were involved heavily in his initial recruitment – you don't see them at all yeah. in his transfer yeah. recruitment. And I think that's pretty telling. I mean, we've been talking more about UCF and USF than Miami. Um, yeah. Which to, to, to some is, is surprising. It, it doesn't really surprise me. I think Miami's going to go in a different direction at the cornerback position. But uh, definitely, I don't think anyone, when we were going through this recruitment process, thought Cormani would be in this specific situation uh, right after his freshman year of college. Well, let's talk about Colorado, though, because I know I made all the Colorado fans mad last week, but at least I wasn't dumb enough to take the bait of you have all these guys entering the transfer portal. Are you worried? Because somebody asked Deion Sanders about that last week. And they're like, aren't you worried about losing potential starters? And like, and Deion, you know, same thing. What are you talking about potential starters? Yeah. So the, they've lost a bunch of guys that they didn't expect to play, which again, that, that Rick George, their AD saying, thank the attorney generals for that. Like, that's the whole point. That's your coach's philosophy. Like, you want to get those guys out of there. So, yes, you should thank the attorney generals for letting you do that. But they're bringing in a couple guys, and one of the guys that they're bringing in is Dayon Hayes, the, the edge from Pitt, who is seemingly one of the more high-impact guys in the transfer portal. Yeah, he was he was on three's top-ranked edge available on the portal. So you bring in him. Uh, they also landed a commitment from the Texas transfer, Peyton Kirkland. Peyton Kirkland, yeah. And then um, Ryan Buell, who, who played at Ohio the last two years and, and had a really productive season in 2023 and was a little bit under the radar. So three guys who who can play probably right away. Uh, we'll be interested to see what Peyton Kirkland looks like in, in year one at Colorado. He – he might be a, a more of a depth guy right to start off, but definitely a guy who can make an impact. And uh, Andy just talked to some people like they had six guys on campus this weekend who would all be high impact guys. So I think I think some more commitments could be coming up the pipeline. Yeah, and that's what we were saying last week. It, it don't don't get that exodus twisted. That was them continuing the churn of the roster. Like that is the the philosophy. Is this is a tryout? And if we don't think you're good enough, we're going to bring somebody else in. Yeah, no, totally. And, and I mean, you look at the guys they lost. There's a couple surprises, in my opinion. But, I mean, mostly, like, maybe open some scholarship spots. Uh, there's a few offensive linemen who went in, and it's clear that Dion wants to add some, maybe some more proven uh, offensive linemen in the spring portal window. So, uh, by no means was there any devastating portal losses for Colorado. So we talk about the, these impact guys, and, and in the spring window, we're not seeing a ton of the impact guys. Deion Haynes certainly is one of those guys. 
But one who definitely is, and not in the position you normally would think about in this situation, the reigning Lou Groza Award winner, Graham Nicholson, leaving Miami of Ohio, he's going to Alabama. I love it. I love it. Uh, obviously one of the best kickers in the country. Um, there's some irony too, right? He, he built out, uh, excuse me, he beat out uh, Alabama kicker Will Reichardt a year ago for the award. Now he's going to go to Tuscaloosa and take over the job. And, and Will will probably be one of the top specialists called uh, this week in the NFL draft. So uh, I love the pickup. Um, I know it wasn't something every Alabama fan had circled maybe, but Kalen DeBorn knew they needed a proven talent at the, the position. He went and got it, and, and he definitely got the, the best available player. Well, that's the thing. I mean, okay, I said this last week, and yeah, it's one of those it, it's a, it's one of those well duh things once you think about it. But given this, has Alabama picked up the two most impactful transfers in the spring window in Caden Proctor and Graham Nicholson? I know we don't look at Caden Proctor as a spring portal window pickup, but he actually is. I mean, yeah, I think you're on to something there, right? Uh, Caden Proctor started and, and saw a lot of playing time last year at Alabama, and now he's back. And yeah, I mean, two of the more high impact guys, Andy. It's it's it, that's that's a good point. I didn't think about that, but yeah, I mean, those are two guys who are truly going to play right away. So we we haven't talked to you since Jaden Rashada hit the portal. Mm. Obviously, you and I have both covered that saga pretty thoroughly, but. How surprised were you last week? One, when you hear he's going in, and two, when you hear that there's a chance he might be going to Georgia. Yeah, I got a phone call maybe about 90 minutes before the news broke, and and I was this is really going to happen. You're like, okay, school three now for Jaden Rashada. School four if you count the Miami decommitment. Um, and then I was told Georgia is the school to watch, and I think my jaw dropped a little bit, and then I made some phone calls, and across the country and everybody was like, yeah, Georgia is a school to watch right here. So that's where we're at. Uh, had initially reported he, he was going to go to Athens this week. That, that's that been pushed back a week. Um, you know how things are in the transfer portal and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to visits. So uh, definitely surprised. I've also been told that quite a few schools have been in contact, so won't be surprised if he takes some visits. But it, it – it, uh, as Rusty Manziel said, the first domino of, of portal season finally drops. Yeah. Though I, I thought it was interesting, and, and we mentioned this earlier in the show, like Kirk Campbell, the OC at Michigan, because we we talked about all before this started, Michigan would be the, the one shopping for a quarterback. He says they're not really looking at that right now. Now, that obviously might just be a smokescreen, yeah. but do you get the sense that that – Michigan's even in the market. They, they said they're definitely in the market for receivers. Like that, they were yep. very clear about that. Sharon Moore said that too. But do you think they look for a quarterback? You know, I, I was told that offensive line and wide receivers are the, are the priority right now at Michigan. Um, I, I think that Al Orgy has checked off in enough boxes this spring where they feel comfortable. And, and unless this really proven starter, um, jumps on the portal. I, I really just don't think Michigan's in a position right now where they feel like they need to take a quarterback. So uh, Dominic Williams from TCU, he's a defensive tackle. He feels like he's sort of the, in the catbird seat, like a, a an impact interior defensive lineman in the spring portal. Very rare bird. Yeah. What a list this guy has in terms of visits and uh, how fast is this? Because I, I looked at his visit schedule that Hayes Fawcett put out last week and it's like five visits in a week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like reality for a lot of guys. Like uh, the the former Michigan linebacker, Mikhail Hill Green, went to Arkansas, Colorado, and AM in like a matter of six days. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of travel. So, but getting back to Dominic Williams real quick, I, I, I think it's kind of coming down to an Oklahoma Texas battle for him. Um, He's a guy who has multiple years of eligibility remaining. Uh, he was a freshman All-American in 2022. And I know he had flirted with the, per the portal back in, in the wintertime, but now he's actually in it, and he's, he's by far one of the top interior defense linemen available. So we saw another bunch of spring games end on Saturday. Does that mean exit interviews Sunday, Monday, portal entries Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting the next 72 hours to be pretty uh, fast-paced and, and see quite a few portal entries. Um, 
I mean, I, I don't know if it's going to be a day one of the, the spring window, but I, we had Oklahoma, Texas, Michigan. I, we had quite a few play this weekend who I, I, I think we could get some if, – if surprises are going to come at this point, it's going to come in the next 72 hours. Yeah, and, and we know who's – who's shopping for things. And I think that's because when you look at the big name programs that want things. So Texas wants D tackles, uh, Oklahoma wants offensive linemen and D tackles. They, they got a commitment from the center from SMU Branson Hickman, but they're still in the market for D tackles. LSU wants a D tackle. Like, do you think there might be a situation where somebody who wasn't going to enter the portal goes, you know what? With all these people shopping for what I am, do I throw my name in? Yeah, I mean, I I fully agree with that that idea. And like, I know quite a few programs also want linebackers, and I continue to hear from personnel directors like there really aren't that many great linebackers in this portal. So if we see a, a really great linebacker jump in, like I think that would be really interesting. But yeah, uh, defensive tackles and and offensive linemen are at a premium right now, man. So. I know you, your time has been consumed mostly by the portal, but obviously you're covering all the other aspects of, of college football and, and the business of college football and NIL. we got to talk about this law in Virginia. It, yeah. it was passed late last week. We didn't really get to it on the show because it's one of those things that I always worry that everybody's eyes are going to glaze over. But I feel like we, we got to talk about this because this is one that could really change some things. So yeah. Virginia passes a state law that goes into effect this summer that basically says – schools can pay athletes directly like they, they can make nil deals with their athletes to market for the schools and what is college sports if not marketing for the schools yeah i think the best way to, to that i've kind of been putting it to people is like when we talk about that california bill right in like 2021 well mm -hmm. 2019 that really forced a lot of states and, and the ncaa to move i think this virginia bill is going to play a similar role um, it was signed by the governor, uh, Youngkin this, this past week, HB 1505. I think it, um, it, it doesn't necessarily put the most pressure on the NCAA, but it really gets the ball rolling. Um, and, and, and Charlie Baker's like, uh, project D one that, that we've talked about a, a couple of times kind of leans into this with the idea of schools paying athletes NIL dollars. And, and this really sets the, the stage for it to happen nationally. Well, and I think it would also relieve some pressure on something that is a, a problem now and will become a bigger problem going forward if the system persists, which I don't think this system will persist because I don't think it can, yeah. but double charging your donors. You know, it, we, the big yeah. news over the weekend was FedEx was going to commit $25 million over five years to, to New University of Memphis Athletics. And, and that's a yeah. uh, FedEx, obviously, a very big Memphis company. But Corporate dollars were really the only – that was the next step because you keep hitting yeah. up these private donors to, to fund NIL. Like, they're going to – they're not going to do it. Yep, yeah. and and let's go big picture too for a sec. So we talked about what's happening in Virginia, which is really important. The big question kind of moving forward is like if we get to collective bargaining or revenue sharing or, or something like that, is there a cap on how much schools can pay athletes? Because if that right. happens – we're still going to have the under the table NIL collective deals that, that we spent so much time talking about now. So that is something I definitely have my eye on as the future of college sports kind of evolves. Yeah. And that's the thing. If you want a salary cap, you, you gotta, you gotta collectively bargain it. That's really your only way to have any rules about your salary cap, because if you don't collectively bargain it, if you just unilaterally impose it on the athletes, then the first time you try to enforce one of those rules, you're getting sued and you're going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why there's unions and collective bargains in, in the professional rank. So I think that's probably something we're going to either see or if we don't see it, it's going to be a bigger mess. Yeah. So we'll we'll pay attention to the other states. I, I realize when, when I say pay attention to your state legislatures, most people on this show are like, oh, no, God, we're, we're here because we don't want to talk about politics. But in this particular case, Stuff might, might happen in your state legislature that really does affect college sports and does affect your favorite college football team. So pay attention to it. It is kind of a big deal right now. Uh, Pete, what what do you think the next big transfer portal dominoes are? We talked about Dominic Williams. We talked about Jaden Rashada. When do we expect to see some, some decisions from those guys? I think for some guys, it will be like midweek this week. 
Um, for other guys like Dominic Williams and Damian Martinez, who have a loaded visit schedule, I think the end of this week at the earliest, maybe early next week. Um, and I think we're in a really interesting point right now in the portal, right? Like the NCAA signed the the new emergency legislation last week. This is like officially the new ner- nor- new norm. Do mm-hmm. we see like a really high profile um, athlete just try to like negotiate for more money right now and throw it going in the portal because now they, they freely can? Like that's what I'm keeping my own eye on these next like eight days. Is like is, is there like a really high profile whether it be receiver or top running back we haven't thought about or an elite cornerback who we all know. Uh, there's like a really high demand for it. Like, it, does that play out in, in a very public right? Do, do, do they drop some breadcrumbs or just straight up go to their coach and say, Hey, I'm going to need more if you want me to stay here because the market for me is pretty good out there. Yeah. And, and um, I, the, the, the way we have to think about it too, was like, this is the last time the athlete can really do that before the season. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that they, they can't. And it's interesting because all these rules I do think if you if you tried to sue for the you can't play for more than one team in a season like those rules, I think the courts would be okay with upholding those. Like, yeah. there's a limit to this. Yeah, at a certain yeah. point, it's uh yeah, it's not the NFL. It is. It's not the NFL. Yeah, the waiver, well, it's waiver the process in like, October through the yeah. God, if there were trades, it'd be wild. <laughs> Something, <laughs> but Pete. Thank you so much. We will have you back later in the week, probably, because I'm sure there's there's quite a bit of news that we will see over the next few days in the transfer portal. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks so much, Andy. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.